back to another video. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm so excited to be here and hanging out with you guys today. We are in one of my favorite hotel rooms ever. I love this hotel so much. I'm so excited to sit down here and film for you guys. Today, as you can tell by the title, I am kind of giving you guys my five top tips for getting into the flight attendant space or if you are a new flight attendant, some tips that I have learned to really just elevate your flight attendant career. So with that being said, let's get right on into it. I have a lot of good little nuggets for you guys and I'm excited to share with you. So let's get right on into it. My first tip that I have for you for anyone that is wanting to get in this space is apply, 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 apply. And not only that, don't just apply to one airline. Don't just apply to your dream airline. Apply everywhere because here's the thing. One, applications take a long time. They are a ton of work. There is a lot of steps that go into it. And with that being said, you don't want to limit yourself to one airline because here's the harsh reality is say you apply to 10 different airlines. You are probably not going to get a yes from all 10. If you do, phenomenal. The world is your oyster, but that is so rare. So do not limit yourself to just applying to one, two, or three airlines. Apply to any airline that is hiring, whether that is a regional airline, whether that is a charter airline, or whether that is a big mainline airline. Apply to anything and everything. Because here's the thing that is also a little tricky with airlines is certain airlines are only open certain times a year. So there are pros and cons to that. The cons is they are only open certain times a year, so your chances are limited, and they are only open for a limited amount of hours or weeks or days or whatever that airline has deemed appropriate for their application process. But the pro is, is you don't have to apply for every airline right off the bat. When you see an airline that you really want to apply to, apply for it. And if you see three airlines that day that you really want to apply to, apply to it. Just apply for anything and everything. I think the biggest mistake in the flight attendant world is applying to one airline and just hoping and praying that that dream airline that you want hires you. And like I said, if you if you do apply to that one dream airline, I mean, that that's totally fine. I mean, do whatever is in your comfort zone. But I would just encourage you from the, someone that has been in this space, in this game for three years, apply everywhere. Because say you apply to 10 airlines, say five of them say no right off the bat. Then you have at least five more chances to at least get your foot in the door and to really get that experience that is so valuable with applying, with doing an assessment, with doing a virtual interview, with doing a phone interview, with doing a face-to-face -face interview. So just don't limit your opportunities because you just never know in the flight attendant world what the recruiters are looking for, what the application process is going to look like, and you just don't want to limit your options because if you limit your options, you're going to get discouraged if you only apply to say two or three airlines, say all those airlines, don't pick you because honestly, that is the nature of the game. In this industry, you do not know what those recruiters and the people that are picking applications are looking for. So instead of just limiting yourself, just do the whole shebang. Apply everywhere you can and just really do your research on who is applying, when their applications open, and what the deadlines for those applications look like because that is so, 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 so important. So please, please, please. Do me a favor, do yourself a favor because you will not regret, in my mind, over applying than under applying because like I said, it just gives you a vast variety of honestly, not only just working on your application skills and sprucing up your resume and really making sure that you're following directions, it just gives you more opportunities. So you just get used to this space, get familiar with the space, and again, give yourself more opportunities. I mean, there's nothing wrong with applying everywhere. The worst they can say is no, but here's the thing. One no is going to be another yes, so just give yourself all the opportunity. I promise you, you will not regret it. Tip number two, I actually have to look at my phone because I don't want to butcher this, is really think about once you apply and whether you are just freshly applying or whether you're in flight attendant training or whether you're waiting to hear back from apps, really take some time and pray, marinate, think about 
where do you see yourself thriving the best and where do you see yourself living? And I wrote that down because there's a lot of factors when it comes to where are you gonna live as a flight attendant. And I can totally say full-heartedly, when you are first applying, when you are in training, when you are waiting, a training date or application statuses, it is really fun and exciting to think about where am I gonna live, right? Because as a flight attendant, you get to see so much of the world, right? You get to meet so many fun people, you get to have amazing trips, you get to move all over, and it is truly so, so, so exciting. But with all the excitement and the fun and the joy of just having big dreams, there's also part of you that has to be realistic and I wish I could have told myself this three years ago because I've had to learn the hard way and I've seen a lot of my friends that are also flight attendants or pilots have to learn the hard way as well so if I could mentor to someone right now through the camera if I could just grab your attention if I could just mentor to someone keep your dreams big truly do dream as big and as wide as you want but also keep in mind where do you see yourself thriving and where do you see yourself living because what i wrote down is you do have to decide one do you want to live in your hometown so if you are applying in the application status what i recommend is googling you know whatever airline you want to work for googling what are delta's flight attendant bases what are united's flight attendant bases what are frontiers flight attendant bases and really look at the list of where these certain companies are putting their flight attendants because you're gonna have to decide do you want to stay in your hometown is that even an option is your hometown a base for flight attendants or are you also what did i write down are you also willing to commute which means that you are flying in either the morning of a trip and then once your trip is done you're flying back you are flying in the night before your trip and then starting your trip and then going back and also have to think about whether you are living in your hometown originally and a flight attendant or if you're also commuting and you are living somewhere else you know how close do you want to be to the airport and these might be little things you're probably like huh brooke are these really that important to be thinking about where I live and how close I am to the airport and if I want to commute and if I don't, I would say yes it is because it greatly impacts, I feel like, your life and your routine and your community. I mean, we'll just take me for an example. I was born and raised in California. As you guys know, I am a Denver-based flight attendant and have been for three years. And let me tell you, when I first became a flight attendant, I moved to Denver, I was so excited, right? It was all so exciting. And then reality set in and i was like oh my gosh this is actually really hard to be uprooted i am 25 right now so i was 24 to maybe 22 when i first started i uprooted everything i'm single i'm not married i don't have kids i uprooted my whole life at 22 years old but so young to denver colorado and i uprooted everything i uprooted my church family i uprooted my community my friends my family my hobbies i mean it was just a big altering life decision and i wish if i could go back a couple of years ago or mentor someone through this camera i would just say just to think about all your options think about what is important to you and any way you go whether you commute whether you go into a base like i have and you you know live here half of the year i would say or whether you stay in your hometown born or raised and work your trips out of your home base there's nothing wrong with any of these options absolutely it's whatever you want i have friends that have done it all i have friends that have uprooted themselves to wherever their company has put them have lived there the rest of their lives and they love it i have friends that commute every single week i literally just worked with a flight attendant she commutes from arkansas to denver every single week or i have other people and we'll just use Dallas for an example, that are born and raised in Dallas and their airline that they are with has a Dallas base and it's the best of both worlds because they can go on a trip for four to five days and they come back and they have their same friends and community and family and support around them. So I would just encourage anyone listening on the other end of this just to think about it. And like I said, there is no wrong option. It's just whatever you think is gonna be the best for you and however you think you are gonna thrive best, I just would really take the time to just sit down be real with yourself because again, there's no wrong answers. Be real with yourself and just decide what do you want your lifestyle and your life to look like because it is a big part of this job. And again, no wrong answers. It's just good to just get real and just think about where do you see yourself and where do you see yourself 
thriving. Tip number three, I think is equally as important as the first two that I shared. If you're new into the flight attending world, into the flight attending space, first of all, welcome. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below and I will respond. I love sharing flight attendant tips and advice because obviously I'm very passionate as obviously I'm a flight attendant and I just love talking about flight attending and flying and aviation and all the things. So if you're new to flight attending, first of all, welcome. Second off, if you are new, if you are under a year, if you are still on probation, because some airlines are on probation for six months, some airlines are on probation for a year, please, please, please listen. I'm gonna like pull you in close, listen. Please, please, please try flight attending for at least one year. Give it one year. Because let me tell you, the first year of flight attending is gonna be your hardest because you are on call, or as we call it, reserve and it is hard it, it really is i mean we all have to serve our time we all have to start at the bottom of the barrel okay and it's hard it's it's really hard but give flight attending and flying one year because i promise you once you're off of probation and you don't have to do all of your probation meetings and check-ins and you don't have to be so cookie cutter straight and you don't have to follow all these little rules that they throw at you that's a whole nother video okay that's a whole nother video but I promise you, once you get past your first year, it gets so much better because hopefully one, you're not on call. Hopefully you have a line, which if you're not in the flight attendant lingo, a line is where you have a set schedule every month and it changes every month, but you have a set schedule. So at least you know when you're flying, when you're not flying, what your off days are, how many off days you have, all the things. Just please, 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 please stick it out for one year. I promise you, you just your world just gets so much better once you're not on call, once you have a schedule, and once you just have a little bit more freedom. And honestly, depending on the airline, you could be off of on call slash reserve a lot quicker, or it might take a little bit longer than a year, but for a general rule of thumb, give yourself one year of flying. Give yourself one year to just get used to the routine. Get used to being on call. Get used to meal prepping. Get used to flying trips. Get used to jet lag. Get used to crew scheduling. Get used to finding your way around the airport. I mean, there are so many things that go with flight attending, and as you do it constantly, obviously those things get easier, but Guys, I mean, I'll tell you, my first year, I mean, my first couple years, I'm not gonna lie, they, they were rough. I mean, it's, it's just, it's hard to know, okay, when is the crew shuttle? How do I meal prep in the summer when it's hot? My plane's hot, how do I make food not go bad? How do I keep up a consistent routine when I'm on the road and at home? How do I interact with my crew? How do I make sure that I'm getting paid correctly? I mean, there's just so many things that just go with it. So just give yourself one year because I promise you, the first year is always the hardest. You're not gonna really make a lot of money. And let me tell you, I mean, honestly, in flight attending in general, whether you're one year in or you're 45 years in, you're not making a ton of money, okay? This job you do not do for money. You'll hear people telling you that all the time. It is not a money job, it is a fun job. And honestly, I'm okay with that because I love what I do and I'm so grateful for what I do. But just give yourself a year. Please do it for me, do it for yourself. Can I promise you, usually after the first year, once, Again, you're off of probation. You probably are very close to being done with on-call. You are very close to having a line. It gets a lot better. Just give yourself a year of just honestly, grace and patience with yourself. Because let's be honest, flying for anyone, let alone doing it for work, is really hard and it's really stressful, right? You're always learning. So just give yourself just grace and patience and just always ask guidance from others i still ask people for help all the time and i'm three years in so don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid to reach out to your support system and just give yourself a year because i promise you after a year if you love the job you'll do it honestly for the rest of your life because it really is truly the best job but just give yourself a year i promise you it'll be worth it tip number four is definitely going to take a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of just finding your groove, but it is making a routine on your off days and on your trips. Now, like I said, this is gonna take some trial and error and it's taken me almost three years to find the routine that works for me right now. And let me tell you, it has made a world of difference for me to just sit down and just make a routine for work and make a routine for when I'm at home, whether I'm at home in California or whether I'm here in Denver. And let me tell you, it just, 
really frees up my mind. I feel much more calm, much more organized, much more just weight lifted off my shoulder because I feel like if you work a regular nine to five or you work from home, maybe this doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but for a flight attendant, I've seen it in my life, I've seen it in other people's life, it is really hard to set a good solid routine for yourself and have yourself feel quote unquote normal. And I keep using the word normal because I feel like if you work nine to five or you work from home, you're able to schedule in things fairly easy that you already are gonna do in your everyday life. Like go to the gym, do laundry, meal prep, you know, all those things that I feel like flight attendants and pilots, we kind of take for granted because it's really hard to try to do those things on your off days or even on the road if you don't have a set routine for yourself. So my biggest advice for this is there's no wrong or right way of doing it. And it's okay if your routine changes throughout the different seasons in your life or the different trips or whatever it looks like just finding a solid routine for yourself that works well for you that makes you happy that makes you thrive that makes you just feel like you are still incorporating things that are important in your life while you're at work and on your days off i feel like it's just been extremely extremely helpful tip number five is probably the funnest tip in my opinion and it is use your benefits yes you tap it on the screen use your benefits use them because i know you're not um this is actually one of my goals for 2023 is i want to use my benefits yes do i use my benefits all the time to go back home to california and see my friends and family yes do i absolutely love it yes but there are so many flight attendants and pilots that we have all these insane benefits that we don't use which is kind of funny i was just telling someone the other day i traveled more for fun before i was a flight attendant than i do now and you're probably like brooke how do you do that well let me tell you sometimes when you fly four or five days or six days a week on your one or two days you don't want to go anywhere else you literally want to just like kick back relax and not do a dang thing so it's it's pretty easy to not <laughs> use your benefits but please use them i'm going to use them so you use them too even if it's a staycation in your city i mean i'm literally in denver right now my parents just came to visit and I'm using this morning to do a little staycation. I went to the gym. I did my skincare. I got an omelet. Now I'm making a YouTube video. Like, it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be extravagant. But just use your benefits. And also, don't let anyone or anything stop you. That is another one of my goals. Is just because your friends can't go on a trip or your parents or your boyfriend or whoever, just go out and do it. And yes. Is the trip gonna look a little bit different? Yes, will it maybe be fun in a different way? Yes, but that's okay. Just go out and use your benefit. Even if it's a day trip, say you just wanna fly to San Diego for the day or you wanna fly to New York for the day, do it. We are in such a unique position or if you are just getting started in the position, you are in such a unique position. So set aside some time and just go travel because you're not gonna regret seeing so many places and doing so many fun things. I obviously love traveling because i'm in this field and i just feel like i want to explore more so just go out there and use your benefits because no one does and it's crazy and i get some sometimes you don't want to and that's fine you don't, you don't have to go you know everywhere every week or every month but even if you planned you know a summer trip or a birthday trip or just a fun day trip like it doesn't again it doesn't have to be anything extravagant or expensive or crazy but just Go out and use your benefits. That's what they're there for. That's what you work hard for. We work hard, okay? We do not just serve Coke and pretzels, okay? We do a lot of things behind the scenes to make sure that people get there safely and efficiently as possible. So go treat yourself and travel. I'm gonna make a pack to myself and you're gonna make a pack to yourself and we are gonna travel this year in 2023 because why the heck not? You know what I mean? So with that being said guys that is my video that is my top five tips and tricks from a three-year flight attendant and yes i'm still kind of a baby compared to others i know i know but those are my tips and tricks for you to succeed as a flight attendant and if you guys want more flight attendant content comment down below and i will gladly give you guys what you want i really am excited to start filming my trips again if you guys want a flight attendant q a if you guys want certain things just again comment down below and i'll be more than happy to give you guys what you want because this is something that i'm obviously really passionate about and i will share with you everything that i know thus far and help you on your flight attendant 
journey because it really is just the best job ever. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here with me. I'm really excited because I'm hopefully going to try to get back on my YouTube game and post hopefully three or four times a month, so once a week. Please hold me accountable to that, guys, because I really want to film more for you guys and just give you guys content that you guys want to see in 2023. So with that being said, that is the video. As always, let me hear you say it. Work hard, stay humble, and be kind. And I'll see you guys hopefully next week for another video. All right, much love. Bye.